come with us now, if you dare, down a rickety staircase into a dank, dark basement. What awaits the Saturday Night Freak Show? <laughs> Hey, thanks for listening to the Saturday Night Freak Show podcast, where a movie review and talk show podcast that comes your way every Saturday, whether you're ready for it or not, in our quest for total world domination. All that we ask that you do in return is go to wherever you found us and hit that like or subscribe button. All of that stuff helps us get found by other like-minded folks like you, and it helps us break those algorithms to become the fastest growing radio show on the planet Earth. These are the internet radio superstars. Holly, Michaela, Sean, and I'm Colin. And we can also, you know, what else you can do to help us out? You can go over to where can they go, uh, Michaela? Tpublic.com slash user slash Saturday Night Freak Show. We've got merch. There's like mugs, there's t shirts, sweatshirts, tank tops, hoodies, all kinds of shit. I don't remember everything, so go take a look, because I know there's more than that. Yeah. Adorn yourself in the wrappings of the Saturday Night Freak Show. We'd appreciate it. Drape yourself in the Freak Show. (laughs) There's enough designs for you to wear a different design every day of the week. There you go. Michaela, can we sneak that picture of Colin and his dummy onto a shirt? Can we get that on Oh, yeah. We have to. Okay. We have to. (laughs) I'll wear that one. People need to see it. I I still have that thing. Yeah, I know. Uh, so it's, it still has you, Colin. <laughs> <laughs> someday it's just gonna. Someday on the Zoom, it's just gonna come up behind Colin's shoulder. I gotta remember just to get it out yeah. before the show. Okay. Well, anyway. <laughs> so, uh, no, I anyway. that thing for an entire show. Don't do that. Uh, tonight <laughs> we watched a movie that was chosen by Colin. Colin, what do we watch tonight? Tonight we watched a movie called. Well, depending on where and how you saw it, now it is uh, regarded as Shivers. Uh, but it was also I saw it under the title "They Came From Within" way back in the day, and it was also apparently called "The Parasite Murders" and was written as "Orgy of the Blood Parasites." Mm. Apt. A lot of different names. Yeah. Apt. And that's uh, coming at us from the year 1975 and directed by the guy that you all know, David Cronenberg. There it is. Um, how do we know David Cronenberg, Colin? Yeah, I was going to say, how many, how many David Cronenberg movies have we done on the Saturday Night Freak Show? Have we done I any? I, <laughs> I don't think I've been here for any. Okay. No, I don't think we've done any. Uh, we're actually putting him on a wall tonight. Thanks to MF Mad for alerting us that uh, this makes his third appearance. Second as a director, we did Videodrome oh, on the Saturday okay. Night Freak Show way back that. in the day. Yeah, I, for, I don't think. I forgot. Yeah, well, Sean, are you here for Videodrome? I was here for it. I didn't need to be. So if you go back in our catalog, you can catch our Videodrome episode. He also directed Shivers, and he uh, starred in Nightbreed. Uh, which we also covered Clive Barker's Nightbreed. He's in that. Right. Yeah. Back in the day. Yeah. I didn't know he starred in it. Yeah, he's the Decker, the uh, psychiatrist. <laughs> I have not seen the movie. I have no oh, idea. Oh, you haven't? Had, oh, okay. Man, I, I had to think, wasn't here for that. I had to think about it for a second because I just assumed I brought it since it had night in the title, but I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> There I wasn't know. here for that. So you can deep you know, dive into our catalog titles there and, and go find all these night chronicles. <laughs> no. <laughs> all right. So shivers, this is going to be uh, you guys. I think all oh, this is a first time watch. Yeah. Indeed. Yes. For right. sure. I've seen a lot of Cronenberg, but not this. Cause I always, and maybe you'll have to help me out here. How you remember like the career of David Cronenberg, but this is actually his third movie. Uh, prior to this, he did something called stereo and another one called crimes of the future, which, and there might be another like racing one in there. I'm not sure. Maybe this is well, a fourth a bunch yeah. of TV movies too. Didn't I, yeah, like, I was, I was going to say just, just at a hunch, I was going to guess this was very early Cronenberg, like first or second movie. So that doesn't surprise me. Yeah, it was. Um, and the fast company, I think is the other one that, uh, but it, this was the, so the, but this one is significant because it was basically the first hit that he had. I think scanners later, that's like three movies later, I think. Right. There's like, cause he did the brood uh, after this and uh, rabid. Right. And then scanners. By, what do you, what yep. do you mean by hit? Um, this, I believe, at the time was the most successful Canadian film ever made, um, which was a thing because a lot. it was actually paid for 
uh, by taxpayers. The government funded mm-hmm. this money and this movie. Uh, so there was a review uh, that came out that was titled, I think, like, uh, this movie is really bad and you should know about it because you paid for it to uh-huh. all the. Yeah. Uh, that happens with what? a lot of movies in Canada, and it's oh, there's always a backlash like that. It seems. <laughs> what what better advertising than that? Like that is if somebody put that in the paper for me, it'd be like, I, I have to go see that right yeah, now. Yeah, exactly. I think that's what happens. It's true. So that's everybody, what, it's effective. <laughs> yeah, it everybody has to go like, see it. It feels like this was the movie that established that his brand of like body horror that he would go on to be like so famous for this feels like the patient zero you know mm-hmm. yeah because i mean this was basically the kind of stuff that he was doing i mean because if you look at both well you look at yeah all of his stuff uh the early early year stuff maybe up until like the fly right is really mm-hmm. well okay here's the question for the kids at home yeah. like uh what, what is body horror because that term gets used a lot. What are we talking about? It, it's, it's like usually trauma specifically a, happening to the human body. Yeah, usually involving a transformation or, mm-hmm. I mean, even losses of appendages and stuff like that. A, a transformation of the body, I think. So would a hostel be a body horror movie? <laughs> no, that's a torture porn. Okay. so that's <laughs> like That is like a human committing another atrocious act on a human. Like. Right. This is happening from within. I mean, it kind of goes mm-hmm. with the uh, with one of the other titles of this movie, but it, yeah, it's, this is, it's like from inside. It's, it's like body used as a vessel that that where, that's where I go with it. Okay. If the body is used as some sort of vessel and there's gore involved with that, that's body horror. Yeah. They yeah, usually doing... get like infected or some yeah. sort of like experimentation or something that gets you yeah. to that transformation Sean is talking about. Yeah. It's yeah. doing things that you can't, uh, you know, cause even then, um, like is a werewolf movie, a body horror movie. It can be. <laughs> depends on the movie. I think. Yeah. 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 It can be. It depends on and what the... parts of that story they want to exploit. Okay. Yeah. And, in like the lore too, I think it depends on too, because like there are some werewolf movies where like they can kind of change at will, and right. that's not, not the that's same not thing. body horror. No, because it's yeah. you know, there has to be a horror to it, right? That your body's yeah. doing something right. that you don't want it to do, and it's taking you on a whole new uh, path and direction in life. But guess what, kids? I looked it up. I'm like, where did this phrase come from? Because we use the it French. all the time. Uh, I can't remember if the guy was actually French. Let's see. It was an author by the name of Philip Brophy. And in a 1983 Mm. article, which was called Horality, the Textuality of the Contemporary Horror Film, he first used the term body horror. Now we use it all the time. And David Cronenberg is generally seen as the progenitor. Do you know what what movies... Do you know what movies he referenced in that article to depict as body horror? I think it was Cronenberg stuff. Was it Cronenberg? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I Even, thought you were going to tell us it was Pierce Brosnan's character in Nomad that uh, came up with that. Yeah. Uh, but <laughs> I mean, but I think they talk about like Frankenstein also as being like, you know, um, you know, you're, you're in a body that you don't recognize and, you know, that kind of. So, I mean, it, it's, it goes back a ways, but for some reason right. now, whenever like, you know, Brandon Cronenberg puts out a movie, he's doing something like Possessor, right? It's like, it's like his dad. It's body horror. It's all body horror. The Canadians do body horror stuff. Um, <laughs> um, <laughs> oh, that should bulge there a little bit more, don't you think? Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. So what uh, what's the setup for this movie? How we how are you going to explain this to uh, to those Canadian taxpayers? Well, I mean, I guess that there is some sort of evil uh, involved in promiscuity and like the free love movement. That's like the most I could get out of this movie. Honestly, uh, I think it's uh, it's a parable for keeping your virginity in an overly sexualized world. And the main character is the virgin. And if you just watch the movie, especially at the end, how he's just trying to hold on to it. Dear life, (laughs) the overly sexualized world is coming for him. And everyone's soaking and sexy, and then they're kissing in the pool. Like, come on, like, which like seems... is a weirdly puritanical like stance for a Cronenberg movie to take? You know, <laughs> I, like uh, that doesn't vibe with like who I know David Cronenberg to be as an artist. You know, sure. I, I think I... mine is more joking um, because I, I'm reading it that way because I think um, I don't think that's their desired effect. I think that's just what you can see after uh, 
however many years on after this, 1975. Holy shit. Then what do you think the desired effect is? Like, if are they are they satirizing that idea? Because that's not coming across if that's the case. Well, I mean, it's it's he's making a horror film. Right. So, yes. I mean, that's 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 the one thing like, like when I'm reading it, I'm like, OK, well, he is trying to use, uh, you know, deviant sexuality, I guess, as a horrifying, you know, to, to horrify and, you know, make the audience go, Ugh, you know, yeah, um, because I, I was reading it. Also, it's like you could also see this as like it's a revolutionary movie, you know, all these Night of Living Deads and all that stuff. Kind of it's like eventually there's one revolution that rises or, you know, that rises up and eats the former you know <laughs> uh, population and replaces it you know and if you're the right. last insane man you're you know the last one to the the party when it uh, flips over so i think there's a lot of that i was looking up i'm like okay so what was going on with like the free love uh movement because that's what i was wondering because this seems like the like part of that like that movement is this is the this is in the residue of that because that would have been more like 60s early 70s uh, I well, I tracked it back. The, so the birth control pill, which revolutionized everything, right? Because basically uh, the birth control pill said you can have sex with whoever you want and not get pregnant, right? This was historic. It came around in the 50s. It was widely available in the 60s, but it seemed like even in the early 70s, it was still being prescribed to like, okay, now people of different age groups can can have it. So I think you're within a decade really of society grappling with you know, the idea that, yeah, you can now have guilt-free sex, uh, you know, with anybody that you choose. And, uh, you know, uh, and that's horrifying for well, some people. Well, because I think Cronenberg and correct me if I'm wrong, he's seeing the disease, <laughs> the disease aspect of it. Right. right? Cause yes. he's seeing it. He makes a movie about like an actual, he gives a communicable disease, a, a form in this as a, a sex parasite we got to talk about this movie it's crazy <laughs> i guess like but okay so we saw that kind of same idea in it follows but like in it follows it didn't make people uncontrollably horny you know so to me that's where like the panic around the morality of sex comes in and it's not just like an std allegory well, I mean, you may be right. I mean, because that's, I think, this is this is why, you know, it's like, I guess, you know, Cronenberg made such a splash on the um, on the scene when he came around is now regarded as one of the, you know, he's like the artist working in horror films, right? That everyone can watch his movies and kind of see like these different, you know, perspectives on it. I think that's what, you know, that you're saying that it's, a, you know, uh, the perspective that somebody brings to art. So it's like, are any of these you know, wrong or right or whatever. It's just cool that it kind of, a movie can, you know, have all these different interpretations of it. Um, so, I yeah. mean, they may all be legitimate or, you know, who knows? I haven't actually, I don't think listened to what he specifically said, but I'm, like, if you read between the lines, it's like, there's a guy there who has a concern to me. It seems like about uh, transmissible pathogens or disease and it's all he's always talking about his body like you know doing weird things his whole filmography is you know i'm going to catch something or it's just going to start growing out of me and in control uncontrollably into something else right at least until he got you know later on and then i'm not entirely and sure. and then he passed it down to his son yeah his son is exactly yeah yeah his Which dad's is off doing a funny way of putting it like <laughs> it's it's a it's a in body thing that got passed down to his son, and now he's now it's your it. pathogen. Yeah, right yeah, yeah. now, now this is your disease. It's a really that's a really unique family and story if you look at it that way. Yeah, because he did uh, Brandon Cronenberg did antiviral and possessor, right? I think those are the right. only two that he's done. Cronenberg's later movies are odd choices for him. I feel like Cronenberg's. Uh, yeah, like a dangerous method. Never saw that, but not going to either. You know, like. Never saw Cosmopolis either, but and the last thing I think I saw by him was Eastern Promises. I like that one. I saw a map yeah, of the too. stars, but I just mm -hmm. found those characters detestable. I saw Spider with uh, Ray Fiennes. I thought that was pretty good. I mean, he's done a, bunch, a history of violence was like the last one right. I thought that I was like, that right. one, you know, is great. But, but I guess like, he's teaming up with Viggo Mortensen again. Isn't a dangerous method like about Carl Jung? And like that's just such, like it's like a period movie. Like yeah. that's such a weird choice for him. I don't understand. Yeah, it's Freud meeting uh, Carl Jung. But I mean, so that's. A, but I just wonder if he's like now going more into the psychological so much that it's like, 
you know. Now he's going straight to the characters of psychology. Yeah. I think so. Instead of doing the metaphors now, now he's actually going after, you know, uh, mm-hmm. actual human yes. psychology. It's like, okay, I get it, but, you know, I liked it when you, you know, Existence was his last, like, uh, you know, horror sci-fi thing, and that yeah. was in the Stay 90s. Stay right. that. Some, oh, you boy. gotta put some put some gore on it, Cronenberg. You can't just start going straight to Freud and shit. Like, put some bugs in it or shit. Come yeah. on. We like the allegory because we're horror yes. people. Our horror movies are smart because they're, uh, you know, <laughs> they contain all this stuff. It just seems to be like something that happens with directors as they get older. They move into that sleepy old man phase where they just make like movies that put you to sleep. You know, like mm-hmm. it, like I it think, happened to Spielberg. They... It happens to all of them. It seems like. I think they they get so old that they don't know subtext anymore. Like they don't know the world around them, and so they forget how to use subtext. And so as they get older, more their movies become more just straight like text, like giving you the message, like punching you right in the face at because mm-hmm. they don't know the world around them. I think that's what happens, and I think that's where Cronenberg may have ended up. Yeah, and some of that I think is you know we haven't got to I guess their ages yet, and it's like okay, is just what appeals to you different than what appeals to like the younger man you? I mean, that's also who knows. Right. Maybe when we're you know sixty, seventy years old, it'd be like, oh yeah, when War I'm Horse. 80, that is a really good movie. I'm, I'm sorry for all you people who like War Horse, but <laughs> no, Colin, I think it's illegal to watch War Horse if you're like under fifty five. Yeah, you know, I think I think you age into that movie for sure. Uh, yeah. Uh, all right. So. Sea biscuit. Yeah. All right. So the uh, the general uh, setup of this movie, right? We've got um, it takes place in this luxury uh, apartment complex on an island somewhere in Montreal. This is kind of cool. The movie starts off in a way that I think another Saturday Night Freak Show favorite movie, the Beyond the Black Rainbow, kind of lifted this opening, right? Of because uh, they even use the pharmacology or psychic. What was it? Uh, they mentioned pharmacology, psychic pharmacology, or something like psychotropic <laughs> drugs. Yeah. yeah. Um, but it basically has this, uh, you know, like come and live at this perfect community where you know we have all the amenities of everything you'd ever need out in the world, but we're going to do it on this insular little island where you're all going to live together. It's going to be just your cut off. It's its own little society, right? Which is it is the island at this point. Yeah, like the the Michael Bay one. And don't we, you dare bring that, Sean. Now that it's been mentioned, don't no, you dare. I don't, have the, I don't think I have the patience for that movie. I mean, I'm guessing it's over two hours long, so no way. Probably. Well, if I yeah, it's a it's a two thirty, I think. So if I understand this correctly, hell no. Okay, so this is what happens in this place. There is a geneticist who is working uh, in this uh, um, apartment complex, right? This high rise yes. apartment complex, and he. Even though he has a grant that he's supposed to be working on a parasite that will replace a organ. If you lose an organ, they're going to try and put a parasite into you that will grow into that organ. And, uh, you know, instead of actually doing transplant surgery, but he says uh, he wants to make a sex parasite so the world will basically evolve into one glorious nonstop orgy and he experiments on this girl that he's been molesting like this is a 69 year old man experiments by putting these parasites into the body of well she's 19 now but it says that he started he met her when she was 12 setting up kind of like okay we're in some sticky ookie like sexual oh, oh, politics oh. <laughs> yeah <laughs> right. and uh at the time we're watching this the sun is still up so that was a pleasant experience to like <laughs> head, start right with this right off the bat and like my neighbors are still it, outside grilling like <laughs> is it better after dark michaela it feels less like, does gross. the pill go down easier it, it feels less, feel less gross. gross okay this is what you don't what want, is, want the whole world seeing what you're doing you're just like, oh, I, mean, yeah, I, right private. I mean let, <laughs> let me let me put it this way i i understand what michaela's saying because when that scene came i had my front door open my window so when that scene came on yeah. i got up and shut my front door oh wow I and shut my blinds. Yeah. Oh, oh, we're, we're watching this. Okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Oh, this is see, this is interesting stuff to just find how people process all this. Because yeah, okay, we're going in uncomfortable territory. <laughs> it's a challenging uh, movie. So, so we're introduced to this in a very bizarre scene. I think because we don't know what's happening, we see this old guy attacking, ripping the clothes off of this like nineteen-year-old woman, and then 
choking her unconscious. And like, is this a sex assault? What the hell is happening? This is intercut with like people, uh, like a couple being introduced to the, uh, you know, being shown around the place. And then he cuts her open, her stomach open. He puts her on a table and cuts her stomach open and then pours acid into her and then cuts his own throat. This is the mystery that starts the movie because you're like, what the fuck just happened? (laughs) This scene scene was already icky enough and it was already like weird enough. But the fact that it was intercut with them being shown around the apartment complex made me so uncomfortable. Yeah. I don't know if it was just like the knowledge that these people are being shown while this is happening in the same building. I don't know if it was that that was bothering me, but something about that interchanging made me so uncomfortable. I know what it was, Hallie. It was also daylight in the movie. Uh, it was, it was in the middle in the of the movie. fucking day. Yeah. yeah. It was like <laughs> early <laughs> afternoon. Everything was in bright afternoon sunlight. Yeah. Michaela needs the cover of that. Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> no, it's she's true. Like, she's like, it's, only there is, night. <laughs> there is There is a subconscious like effect that of night and day and this kind of thing. That's why in movies, when the sun comes up, the, the movie's over. Good things are happening again. <laughs> yeah. It's always right, at night that bad shit happens. That's why that one scene in Zodiac is so fucking terrifying. Because he's he's got that black getup on and he's got hide the, the people up in the middle of the fucking afternoon. Yes! Like... Yeah. Terrifying. It's, it's no, thing nowhere is safe. The listeners will back me up on this. Yes, I agree. <laughs> oh no, I'm with you. Well, the uh, we're introduced to the. I guess it takes a while to get there because there were a couple things that I was like on this watch. Obviously, I know it's coming, but number one, you got to set up who your aunt, pr- protagonists are, and for the most part, we're introduced to. Uh, I think it was Doctor Roger, right? Uh, Roger Saint Luke. Roger Saint Luke is the. <laughs> Like, he's the physician in this self-contained apartment block, right? They have their own dentist and their own doctor. He's the clinic doctor. Uh, his nurse? His Is name this, was... Uh, uh, oh, what's her name? Lowry. Uh, well, her, yeah. The actress? I thought you had the character. Yeah, the character is uh, uh, Nurse Forsyth, but she's Forsyth, played yes. by Lynn Lowry. Lynn Lowry, right? Lynn you Lowry. may remember. From because she's a striking woman, she has appeared three times on the I Saturday Night Freak Show. Yes. Oh. But she was I also, remember her from that. She was the one. She had dark hair and she was just. I know. I remember that when you were talking about pie porn that was happening later on in this movie, where people are eating pie and it's just falling all over the place. I thought you yeah. guys were referencing <laughs> "I Drink Your Blood" because she was in it. But we also was, saw yes. what was that other movie that we just watched recently where somebody ate like iced. Somebody's eating pie and. It went all over the place. So much pie. We need to do a whole episode on the pie trauma we've seen. (laughs) Yeah. Mm, Pie trauma. It's a lot. Yeah. Well, she was also, um, she was also in um, Cat People, uh, the remake of Cat People. So three movies. That was MF Mad, also the keeper of the Saturday Night Freak Show Wall of Fame, helped us out with that. Um, But Lynn Lowry is a face that I think horror aficionados would recognize. For those movies, she was also in George Romero's The Crazies. Uh, mm-hmm. so, I mean, she was in a Romero movie and a Cronenberg movie. Um, and then after cat people, she like quit Hollywood for uh, a number of years, number. I mean, I mean, like she came back to work in like 2004 and since then she has been in more films than she was back, uh, in the, in the seventies and eighties. Right. That yeah. was the resurgence. Like the late, somebody discovered all of her films. They're like, we're huge fans. Come yeah. I'm going to guess Rob zombie put her in something. <laughs> I think we had this conversation. Yeah. It's like she needs to be in a Rob Zombie movie, but I don't think probably, she, she probably got that I'm, look. Now, I'd put like, money on it that she has been. He loves to do that. Yeah. I know. I she was could like, be a witch. I was like, was she in Lords of Salem? Was she? I don't. He really does collect so. horror icons. Yeah. <laughs> he does. Um, yeah, but okay. So Lynn Lowry's the nurse. And then we've also got uh, a guy named Nicholas. Uh, he is apparently uh, also infected with these creatures and his wife and the uh, neighbor across the hall is Barbara Steele um the great euro horror beauty from uh, uh Black Sunday right Mario Bava's Black Sunday she was in eight and a half the Federico Fellini movie uh, she was also in Castle of Blood and Nightmare Castle and yeah I really like her I always find her to be very striking no matter what role she's in I, I dig her she has that look like if there was someone who was mm-hmm. born to be in horror movies 
Barbara Steele. Right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, she's yeah. got that like vampy look. Mm-hmm. Very much. She's yeah. also, she, she ends up into playing doctors a lot. Wasn't she like a, was she a doctor in Piranha? She was like an official or something that came to, she was in Piranha and she was in uh, Dark Shadows. Remember when they brought Dark Shadows back for TV? But she also was the producer of The Winds of War and War and Remembrance, those big Ooh. epic World War II uh, uh, miniseries that, oh yeah. Interesting. Yeah, okay, there you go. Um, so, <laughs> um, so Nicholas, this guy, right? How did he get the parasites in him? He fucked the girl, I'm guessing. Yes. I, that just came to me that that's how he got them. Yeah. It just came to you? It, it just came to me. I was concentrating on other things in this movie. Uh, yes, it just came to me that that's where he got Because we're introduced to the characters. Um, it's very, like Colin was describing, it's very abrupt. We see the scene with the doctor and the girl, and then we just see the scene with Nicholas. I, do we get introduced to him when he's brushing his teeth and yeah. poking himself? Yeah. So we don't really know what's going on. But we know he's doing something to himself, and his wife talks to him about being sick and the doctor and everything. Yeah, they end up I uh, it I, because I think the doctor, Doctor Roger, what was his last name? Saint Luke. Do, doctor Doctor Saint Luke. Saint Luke. Saint Luke. Guy. Yeah, Roger Saint Luke. Saint Luke. Uh, he begins uh, Very Canadian <laughs> fielding a bunch of um, <laughs> patients who have all, it turns out, are, are basically have had sex with this girl. So she got. So the, the what does the parasite do to you? We're explained. This is explained to us by this other doctor that uh, Dr. Linsky, that Dr. St. Luke goes to for advice. Right. <laughs> Rolo Linsky. Um, what did he say? He wanted to, because he was talking about doing the organ replacement before, but he wanted to do it so it would. Uh, what did he say? It's I forgot a, the specifics of like it. It's like an aphrodisiac right. somehow. So the, the thing that's in you. And so, uh, well, what are we talking about? What is the pair? What's it look like? I mean, it looks like a slug. Looks like a slug. Mm-hmm. Okay, that's very generous. Bigger, with a bigger asshole. Um, I thought it looked it, like a piece of shit, but I could be wrong. I mean, yeah. It's, <laughs> In some scenes okay. it does, yeah. <laughs> like, it, it is one of those, like Swamp Thing himself, it's one of those things that changes from scene to scene. So yeah. there's little, it's a, a little thing. But it looks, I mean, it's a, it's like a tuber. Oh, a uh, sea cucumber. There you go. There you go. <laughs> Just yeah, a yeah. really shitty bloody sea cucumber. Mildly phallic looking thing with... Uh, Mildly. Just, yeah. Uh, that crawls around. So this is, I think, uh, maybe... it looks like a shriveled penis. Basically, that's yeah. And in one scene, we actually see it. Um, this is the scene that I saw when I was an impressionable youngster and caught this movie on the Late Show. Uh, mm. Barbara Steele in a bathtub, <laughs> and the thing comes up through the drain and squiggles its way into her. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, oh, god! <laughs> it's like, what the? Right? Yeah. That's how they're... shocking for audiences. I'm guessing. Yeah. This scene was weird to me because like there was so much nudity up until this point. And then this scene, <laughs> they like take great pains to like cut around and not show any nudity. Yeah, it was So much so God. that she had a leg double. Did yeah. She? I, that's what, I mean, that's what the internet tells me, but who knows if they're right. Oh, wow. Well, maybe it's yeah. Barbara. Steel. Leg... I think, I think it's gotta be. I mean, she apparently she had a leg double for when that thing was squiggling between her legs. Oh, wow. Sorry. I did this. <laughs> Yeah, it's kind of gruesome and kind of sets up the whole. I mean, this is how they're going to get inside you one way or the other. This is like we've seen Night <laughs> of the Creeps. The yeah, <laughs> we've seen Night of the Creeps and um, Slither. Uh, Slither, you know. James Gunn's seen this movie, yeah. Yeah, because I think this all kind of. This is the first one that I can remember that had slugs crawling around trying to get in your body in some way, shape, or form through the mouth or any kind of orifice uh, that's available. Um, and then they excrete some kind of a toxin or something inside you that basically makes you, it's like uh, ecstasy, right? It's like you just want mm-hmm. to touch everybody. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Also called the 70s. <laughs> well, we see it. It's like, but it is kind of gross because, like, I think what some of the first uh, instances we have that there's something going wrong is like this woman opening her door as like the, was it the delivery guy going through, going by? It's a guy like with the food service, and she's yeah. like, "I need, I'm hungry, I'm hungry for love," and she's got boils all over her face. Uh, oh yeah, she yeah she grabs the dude out of the hallway. That is. That's the most terrifying thing in the world. First of all, 
I, I love 1975. I love the delivery, the meal service that's happening here with this tray that he's, that they, they take the time to film him being very precious and getting it through the doorway because he doesn't want it to drop. It's just very funny the way they go about that. But yeah, um, delivery service dude in full talks, this old lady with, like you said, the boils on her face, just grabs him out of the hallway and she's like, I need love. <laughs> I laughed at this part. It was pretty funny. <laughs> this was funny, yeah. Oh, that was a laundry Ooh. room lady. That was yeah, a laundry room lady because Nicholas uh. like vomits one of these things off the balcony onto these little ladies who are walking with an umbrella. <laughs> it bounces off, crawls into the laundry room, attacks the laundry lady, and that's her beginning that right. that cycle of the infection. Yeah. Okay. But was that supposed to be funny? That's what I couldn't figure out. <laughs> Which like, the rain, like the her, rain. her grabbing him and screaming, I need love in his face. Like, because that was pretty fucking comical, but I don't know if it was intended that way. Yeah, I, don't I know. wish I could see this in 1975. That's yeah. the only thing I, I, uh, I'm not gonna say hate or dislike. It, it's, it irks me that you can't feel that again, or you can't feel that for the first time. You can't go back to 1978 and watch Halloween or any of this stuff. So I think you can. Oh. All you got to do is watch all the movies around it. And then you're in the headspace. And then when you see that one, you're like, oh, that's what this is like now. Oh, the audience reaction. <laughs> oh, Colin. Yeah, you can't get that. Yeah, uh, Sean wants no, to see I how wanna, the wanna, audience reaction. I, yeah, I want to be there with everybody. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so the uh, so the infection is running rampant through the building. Um, we've got um, Nicholas seems to be the one who we see most of the parasite action with um right am i am i right in saying that because there's a scene where he's laying down on his bed because there's always been this thing of like there's something inside him that moves they talk about like you know something that you can push around under the skin and in this scene we actually do see um things moving around in his stomach uh and boiling yes, to the, the surface very hairy stomach and he's talking to it like yeah a dog Kind of, right? He's like, he's like, what was he saying? He's like, good boy. Uh, no, it's okay, boy. Like, he, he's talking like it's his little best friend. He's like, wait, no, don't come out. Don't come out right now. I don't want to die. Yeah. It's like he's talking to his chest burster before it comes out. They don't seem to die when these things come out, although their mouths get all bloody when they do, right? Yeah. They, but they I do think just it's still swimming like, around in the tubes. Yeah. They live in your stomach yeah. acid or something? I don't know. Or in your I mean, I guess so. I think they can survive that considering what is probably um, they burn people and shit. Yeah, I wasn't sure where the acid things come fr- comes from, but that's 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 coming up in a scene. But first of all, this scene with the the stomach um, monsters moving around in there. Um, so, because as we were watching, I think Michaela said like this is actually some pretty good special effects. The only reason mm-hmm. I'm um, highlighting this is because the guy who did this, his name is Joe Blasco, right? Who I guess was like the personal um, makeup man for Orson Welles, like way back in the day and like Bette Midler and a number of other Hollywood stars. Um, But he invented the bladder effect, the air bladder effect for um, that was used in, you know, (laughs) science fiction, horror movies. Yeah. Yeah. um, Going forward. So, and then he patented that thing. I hope so. Right. Did he patent it? I don't know. Uh, But he he did, he did create his own cosmetics line. I thought the well, stomach bubbling go. looked really, really good. That was, it like, really did. The way it went back down to normal was impressive. Yeah. yeah. A little better than the, the neck ones because we got that uh, transmissible thing where uh, I believe Barbara Steele, once she becomes infected, uh, becomes like tries to get Nicholas's wife to sleep with her and gives her a kiss. And during the kiss, we see there's a yep, transmission because just... a, a, a parasite makes a bulge in Barbara Steele's throat. And then a minute later in the wife's throat, we're like, oh, the thing has made its its loop. Um, the older doctor. Um, you have the worst words for this comment. <laughs> <laughs> Describing these things. It made its loop. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, the older doctor, he, uh, comes to the rescue, right? That's like his whole thing is like, cause basically what we've got here is one of those, um, pandemic situations in movies where like the apocalypse is nigh, where something starts off very small. This is, you know, the, uh, ground zero 
for something that's going to go larger and eventually destroy the entire human race. Um, so it's kind of getting out of control very quickly. Uh, on, I think this takes place over like a day, right? Isn't it like Feels a day? Like it. Yeah. Feels like a day. Yeah. And the old doctor comes over and uh, he ends up uh, going up to see Nicholas. And at that point, the parasites are like on his stomach. Like they're just sitting on his stomach, right? I, I think so. Cause then he, he pulls down the bed sheet and then they're just kind of like hanging out there yeah. before it jumps and tries to get him. I couldn't tell if they had burst out or they like crawled out of his mouth and then just kind of were hanging out in his stomach underneath the sheet. It's very gross. And then they it jump is, up on the guy's face. And he has to use pliers to try and pull him off. That was so disgusting. It is quite a, uh, uh, it is quite a predicament you get in. It is, it takes a lot to get them off and you usually end up very bloody as a result. Yeah. Um, but this is basically turning all of the people in the, uh, the sky rise into sex crazed maniacs. Yes. Um, what do we see here? What, uh, what, what does the movie show us? Uh, well, we see um, guys in speedos coming out of the elevator uh, exploring, which I thought that was pretty fun. Honey, I mean, if two dudes walked out of the elevator and gave me that look in, while they were in speedos, I'd, I'd probably back away too. But yeah. we're seeing everybody come out of their apartments and everything and kind of either they're just viciously, like sexually attacking people or they're kind of like hanging out and enjoying it. It's kind of a little bit of both. They, this place. It seems like you eventually progress into like a sexual zombie. Like it's the only mm-hmm. thing you can think about or, you know, mm-hmm. verbalize. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it has like, we keep seeing um, like just, uh, I don't know. I guess I was say, classifying it as like deviant sexuality only because it's like, well, we got, you know, a guy comes into an elevator where there's a mom and, and the girl, <sighs> right? Well, he's the pie eater, and it's just kind of gross. He's got raw pie in his, in his hand, <laughs> yeah. and it's dripping all over the place. Then he attacks mom, and when they're found later, it's like mom's like dead on the ground, and it's the little girl and the guy who are still like, <laughs> and you're like, oh, yeah, Jesus. and he's like smelling his hair and uh, smelling her hair and shit. Like, yeah, it's. Yeah. Yeah, the imagery's a little, yeah, it is a little ugh. creepy. Yeah, and yeah, there's uh, I think the guy takes refuge in an apartment where there's this old guy and his daughter, and he's like, "You like my daughter?" Then he starts making out with his daughter. Um, <laughs> Have you? Did you watch his face during this whole thing? Who, Paul's? It is, or uh, Roger? Uh, Roger, sorry, Roger St. Luke. Yes. Yeah. This this guy, he is the most stoic person I've ever seen in a movie in my life. His blood pressure does not rise. Like, everything in this movie is a mild inconvenience to him. And if you just watch his face, like when they're walking down the, the wood slat hallway and everything, and all the arms are coming out to grab them and everything, like, he's not scared or anything. He has, like, a slight irritation on his face. He's like, ugh, what are these yeah. people? Like, it's, he's, I think he's hilarious. Like, I don't know how this came off in 1975, but his reactions to everything are, are like, I, to me, make this movie. Like, he's hilarious in the other half of this movie, and he's barely doing anything. So he's like he, the stiffest, most stoic person. Do you think that was a director choice or actor choice? Oof. Um, I think it's, uh, this early on, I'm going to guess this is mostly actor. And do you think mm-hmm. this is, is he well cast for the role? He, uh, <laughs> well, I mean, like you said, Colin, he's the doctor you'd want. Um, you- <laughs> well, I mean, there's a scene <laughs> right, where his nurse is trying to get him to come up to her apartment. And so she's undressing in front of him. And we keep cutting back to him. And I mean, you would have to like put a fucking mirror underneath his nose to find out if he's breathing. Yeah. Right. <laughs> like-, like nothing. Like she's, she's changing into her another outfit. So, I mean, and this, I'm. This you know, it's well, Lynn Lowry. Sort of like a sec- yeah. it's a, it's Lynn Lowry, and it's a sexy scene. Um, and she's changing, and he doesn't like. He's just staring at her, and things keep appearing in his hands between the cuts. Like you cut back, and he's just smoking half a cigarette. Like, is this airplane or something? Yeah. Like, I, I thought. Does anybody else find this hilarious? Because the way they're doing it, like I know meant to be serious, but it's hilarious. Well, so I- you're saying this part could have been done by Leslie Nielsen, is what you're saying? It could have been. He's got that. <laughs> He's got that Leslie Nielsen, Robert Stack. Like, I'll say the weirdest shit, but my tone is not going to change. Yeah. Like, that's yep. this guy. And I, for some reason, I love that. I love when they mm-hmm. just say messed up shit, but they're just like, 
keeping that stern well, face. But like, I get that if that's like what happens. if the, if there's going to be uh, if you use that type of character so that later on you can show like how that character has changed after they yes. become infected or whatever. If that if that should happen, you know. Uh, but this movie doesn't ever really give you that opportunity. No. And in, you know, some of those scenes like that one, I was just describing in particular, I wasn't sure how to read it because the end of that scene, he's on the phone with the doctor. What was it? R- Rizzo? No, uh, Linsky, Dr. Linsky, Rose. who is explaining right. like, so if anyone's doing any kind of like, uh, you know, impulsive sexual behavior, you might want to, you know, look at that as, you know, we got to get on that pretty quick. And th- then it cuts to, you know, this is as he's been watching his nurse change and then she gives him the eyes, you know, and then walks off. And I'm like, okay, are we supposed to read that as he's thinking, oh, maybe, you know, that was some impulsive sexual behavior or not. I couldn't tell by watching it. I'm like, I don't know. You're not going to get it from watching. (laughs) His his thoughts are his own and we will never know. Yeah. That man's got some guarded secrets. Yeah. Well, she ends up, the nurse ends up getting attacked in her apartment. Uh, She answers the door. That was a pretty creepy scene where, you know, she's like, can I help you? And the guy's like, yeah, you can help me. And he comes in at her uh, and is like, you know, there's a sexual assault about to take place. She has a uh, carving fork in her hand as she was preparing dinner. I love this. When she had the carving fork, it was amazing how long it took her to use that as a weapon. Yeah. We need to talk about what she was quote unquote preparing for dinner first. <laughs> this is this right, is really where this movie meat. stretches credibility. It's, it's just close up of her just chopping like random vegetables and shit. But then they like she quarters a tomato and that's it. For the salad, yeah. She quarters a tomato she for the salad. It. And she doesn't cut the little like butt part off <laughs> either. She just quarters it, it, it whole. Was- I would have been less insulted if she just taken a bite out of that tomato. Yeah, that makes more sense than what she did in this movie. Like, yeah, have you ever made anything in your life that just calls for like a quartered tomato? Like, and <laughs> quartered tomato. Yeah. It's gotta be like how many, you, how many tomato it's, related deaths happened in the seventies? No, it's, it's gotta be like when out. you like when you go to an Italian restaurant and you get like a complimentary side salad with your meal, and it's literally just iceberg and a quarter of a tomato. Yeah, that's what it is. And maybe that's exactly what it is. Yeah, maybe this is, yeah comes from uh, I don't know the the seventies. Seven shivers. <laughs> the seventies. Shivers, shivers is the genesis of all this stuff. Yeah. No, I was just uh, yeah. I mean, because she uh, you know quarters. I was like, was she going to go back to the uh, tomatoes like after? Because she was like, oh wait, I got to get this the roast out of the oven. Maybe who knows? And I'm like, the oven door is open now because this attack happened. And then she leaves after she stabs the guy with the fork. She leaves the apartment. I'm like, oh no, the roast is ruined. They come back, and of course the guy's not there. And then it's like, okay, are these our two heroes? Are they somehow going to make it out of this apartment? unscathed because at this point there's a full roaming orgy happening um <laughs> it really is it's like the, the end of the shining except there's just an orgy on every floor in every room old people are being attacked in their homes by orgy going or sex crazed fiends um mm-hmm. and we're like okay how are they going to get out of here because that's the thing you're like well you're in an apartment building you know there's really you got elevators and you got uh you know the uh, stairwells and that's really it to get to the front door um so i'm like well how you know eventually if you got like a whole bunch of these crazy people all over the place which they do so they end up getting separated she gets infected at one point in the basement correct a guy does plant a kiss on her that carries the demon worm um right and then she gives like a speech that was like an an impassioned speech with a great ending. Yeah, that's what you were talking about. I wasn't sure if we that's were all what, synced up when we were watching this, but neither uh, was I. So I just put that out there. But when she's like, she's talking about love and sensuality and all this stuff, and then she goes, ah! <laughs> and then the thing starts coming out. And then our no nonsense Dr. St. Luke just is like, <laughs> and just punches her in the face, like, you silly woman. I've got to get us both out of here. Yeah. Then he puts a, <laughs> a much quieter. Yeah. He puts a, a, a Kleenex or something around her mouth. He's like, okay, it's going to keep that little fucker inside there. Yeah, because she was <laughs> yeah, going off. That's where I wonder, like, this is where, you know, like, David Cronenberg gets into these, like, uh, I wonder if these are his 
philosophical ideas about what the theme of the movie actually is because he does something similar to this in Crash. Um, but she goes, she has this, like, I had a dream last night and in the dream, I was like making love with an old man, but he was diseased and I was repulsed by him. But he told me that even old flesh is erotic flesh and like, uh, what even disease is two alien organisms expressing their love for each other. And it was like, what? right. And she's even- like, just talking is erotic. Just breathing, yeah. just existing is erotic. You're right. That's what she said. Yeah. 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 And then all of a sudden, and, and we're all just like, yeah, <laughs> keep talking, keep talking. And then, oh, <laughs> then it wasn't good yeah um so and then because you know, some of this is like well you know either uh i gotta expand my definition of like what you know <laughs> it's like what the fuck are we going on about here um this ends up need to expand our horizons yeah 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 that's right because love enters through the nose no one's ever tried that so the the uh <laughs> In mean, David Cronenberg world, like he'll figure out a way. Um, so at the end of it, they get separated down in the basement where there's all the crazy people where uh, David Cronenberg is actually one. Of, I think the guys who reaches out through the bars and is like licking like crazy. Um, mm. So this movie, oh, that's a car crash, ironically enough. That's right. They're in like a horrific car right? crash. So even, back, to <laughs> even back then he was testing shit out. Yeah. That's true. Is they're trying to escape? And that's a, and that's a that's a quote unquote sexy movie too. Like he's just yeah. looking through just his weird, his weird shit. Yeah, yep. Yeah. Sex and technology and sex and science and the fusion of yeah, but the biological yeah, the and the technological. Is it grotesque? Is it sexy? Is it? Yeah. We don't know. Um. So the, fancy. Well, Duderman, uh, Doctor Roger, Roger. He ends up like escaping. Right. He does get out. And we're like, okay, he's going to make it because I think he's all oh, right. Because he goes to the pool and he sees the um, he sees the women from earlier in the pool and just hanging out. Yeah, it's Barbara Steele tries- and Nick's wife. Right. And then he tries to escape after he gets a nice breath of fresh air, um, which is uh, what I like to think is all he was looking for since he's a doctor. Like, I think he lives by those rules. Like, he just some fresh air and he eats an apple a day. Like, I think he's that kind of guy. <laughs> <laughs> he says he says the old dude who comes in who's like hey hey doc look, look at me i'm like you're spry and all that he's like well you're you're more healthy than i am <laughs> <laughs> right <He's, laughs> nothing you can't this, get this guy a joke or nothing he's a very serious man yeah i kind of love him but he doesn't get away because uh it turns out over the hill right you get that kind of night of living dead imagery of like all these uh uh folks the, all these sex monsters coming for you. Yeah. And they back him into the pool where he has to, uh, I guess he's surrounded. They're just piling into the pool for the big end of the movie pool orgy. Why is it that orgies right. always take place in pools? I suppose because you can that's, wash off. Colin, Something. that's that's the sex for him. That is the, that is, um, that is the, I'm going to say that's the orgasm for him. And what do we see him doing in the next scene after the orgasm? Smoking. Smoking. Oh, that's right. That's right, Sean. That's that's yeah. I like this. There it is. She lights. She lights a cigarette as they're driving through. Yeah, what she. It is. The nurse, the infected nurse, gets him, and we're like, oh man, we're in invasion of the body snatchers territory. They hadn't come out yet. Basically, it's like one of those bleak seventies endings where our heroes did not, uh, were not able to stop the apocalypse. In fact, mm. they're going to spread the apocalypse or the disease beyond the borders of this little community because the last thing we see is all of these cars leaving and uh, taking all of these leaving. folks yeah, to, I guess, the rest of mainland Canada where they're going to spread um, the sex parasites. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. It's, um, yeah. I, I there suppose, it is. Yeah. Um, well, I guess you sex were parasites. kind of curious about what we thought of this movie uh, and would probably like to hear. I am. about that but first we're going to have to read some of your mail and in order to do that we're going to have to summon our mailman his name is igor bring us the mail masters masters the mail i've got the mail so many letters our followers are rising rising why thank you igor thanks igor do you think igor has like the ability to produce slugs if he wants, like at will. I think well, he's, he's, he's is the progenitor. 
He's made of them. You know, like Oogie Boogie and Nightmare Before Christmas is just made of bugs. That's Igor. He's made of slugs. Is Igor yeah, just a bunch of slugs, slugs in a trench there. coat? Yes. Yes, he is. Are they sex slugs? Is he down here like trying to screw all the rats and stuff that run around? Guaranteed. Away? Okay. Guaranteed. All right. <laughs> Uh, okay, so <laughs> we want to. Re- <laughs> we want to remind. Well, I mean, if you're doing this movie, I guess like this is what you got to do. I mean, true. About. It's pretty much all up for grabs. Yeah. Um. So, I guess we should tell folks how they can get a hold of us uh, by following along on Facebook. Facebook.com slash Sat Freak Show or on Twitter at Sat Freak Show. They can email us directly. Sat Freak Show at Yahoo.com. Or you can follow along on Instagram. It's Saturday Night Freak Show. About tonight's movie, Shivers Kryptonian Orphan writes in and says, I haven't seen this one yet, but I'll check it out before Saturday. Of course, with Cronenberg, you could always do the fly. Please, please. I love your show. Up, up, and away. That's a great username. I, the unrelated, <laughs> but I love the username so much. But I'm kind of surprised there hasn't been more Cronenberg in the past on this show, honestly. I feel like I yeah. assumed all that stuff had been covered already. Yeah. Hey. Well, what did we, you did the fly too, right? Or that wasn't Cronenberg. That's not Cronenberg. But, no, uh, just video drum in this. I mean, of his, like, you uh, know. Yeah. That's I've, surprising to me. Yeah. Yeah, it is. Uh, Michael Whitaker says, prepare to be uncomfortable Cronenberg style. It's a movie about sexually transmitted body snatchers, complete with pulsating stomachs. Needless to say, this one is weird. Uh, DJ Malka says, heck yeah, I've been looking forward to some, to a good reason to watch this Been looking forward for a good reason to watch this. Now I do rabid, the fly scanners, the dead zone, keep the Cronenberg coming. Um, there you go and check out. Like you said, yeah, we haven't video yeah, drone. We haven't done scanners, spoken. have we? No, we haven't. No. Yeah. There's like a whole bunch. Well, we haven't done like a lot of, we talk about Wes Craven a lot, but I don't even think we've done like a lot of his actual movies or Romero or Cronenberg. Yeah, I mean, I feel like we've done a lot of Craven. Yeah, we've, we've done, done a lot, lot of Carpenter for sure. Yeah. We've um, done a decent amount of Craven too, just not yeah. the good memorable stuff. Mary, That's the Mary, yeah. Uh, uh-huh. Ah, there it is. Yeah. Cursed. That's right. You're, cursed. Yeah. Uh, right. People under the stairs. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, well, I feel about, like we just did a couple like within the last couple months too. Well, uh, that one was West Craven presents. Yeah, we did a couple right? of West Craven presents, Dracula Wishmaster, 2000. and and Dracula right. 2000. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Speaking of Dracula 2000, Pat Hetfield oh, no. writes in and says, "Since you've done this, does this mean you're also going to do Dracula 3000, the one set in space that has Coolio in it? I don't care one way or the other, but you started down that rabbit hole. Do you continue? I am very never intrigued." Know. I was going to say, well, I mean, you guys start it. I'll continue. I'll pick a sequel. Yeah. I did not even know there was a Dracula 3000 because we said there's two sequels to Dracula 2000, right? I, I don't think it's related. Yeah. I would not whatsoever. think so. Um, yeah. We were asking because we, uh, we showed uh, an image on our social media of what Gerard Butler's Dracula 2000 look was in his audition where I don't know if he was coming off of the Gary Oldman thing, but he had a lot of hair and a beard and fangs and all that. And uh, compared to what they went with in the actual film itself, Stephen Haynes writes in and says the final look for the movie is definitely better. Uh, In the audition, he looks like a Vegas magician. (laughs) <laughs> yeah he did he looks like chris angel <laughs> I mean, or something I thought he looked like a vegas magician in the movie too just a more cleaned up one yeah true there you go because it's angel still looks like that yeah yeah and then does. anybody see fright night the 2011 remake of fright night yes yeah where they had uh david Tennant played the vampire hunter who was a vegas music magician who kind of looked like that yeah um true. yeah chris angel and, and whatnot yeah uh, Richard Kratzer writes in and says uh, he thought that uh, Gerard Butler's Dracula was somewhere solidly in the middle of screen Dracula's. He thought it was below Gary Oldman's Dracula, but way above Dominic Purcell's Drake from Blade Trinity. Yeah, I'll go along with that. All right, then. Uh, about Howard the Duck, the episode we did on Howard the Duck, Simon Carter wrote in and said, uh, does anybody else get this duck tits? We who sung to the tune of DuckTales stuck in their head <laughs> the minute this movie comes up in conversation? I mean, um, no, but now I will. <laughs> right. I was going to say, I hadn't before read the comment, but now I will. 
And uh, Stephen Haynes writes in again and says, ah, they don't make them like this anymore. Back when you could warp children's fragile little minds with aliens, tentacles, boobs, and implied bestiality and still get a PG rating. Ah, uh, the good old days. <laughs> right? Yeah. The 80s were something else, I'd tell you. Um, yeah. All right. So now we're going to go around the table and tell you what we individually thought of tonight's movie. Shivers, starting with... Sean. Okay. Uh, shivers. Um, it's good to finally see it tonight. This one had been, it's, this one had been on the list. Um, it's always an adventure, uh, watching a, uh, quote unquote new David Cronenberg movie. Um, this is, uh, this really is a weird movie. Um, it is, but I think it's, uh, but for me, it's an entertaining movie. Um, it is, I'm glad it's a more kind of, um, I guess serious, more, um, I don't know, based on other slug movies we've seen, which happen to go probably more the way of comedy or probably a little more light, lighthearted, um, <laughs> lighthearted, <laughs> lighthearted, little lighthearted slugs. Um, I mean, so it's, it's kind of nice to see like one of the, uh, earlier ones and, you know, it's a little more serious of a horror movie. Um, I think this movie rides a, a pretty good line. There is some stuff that is, I mean, genuinely disturbing um, horror movie stuff. Um, but it also, like, un- whether it's unintentional or not, um, it also, it's entertaining in that it's very funny to me. Like, I can't help but watch this movie um, with, you know, twenty twenty one eyes. But I think that, um, uh, I think there's a lot there for that doing as well. Like I said, I found the last part of this movie um, to be very funny. I think the... Uh, actor playing Roger St. Luke. Um, I think what he's doing is great in this movie. And I think it makes it, um, uh, imminently more watchable. Um, it's got a good, like the supporting actors are very good. Um, uh, Lynn Lowry. I like her. Um, it's, uh, it's a good movie. It's, a, I don't know. It's also a little weird. Cause it's also a little, it's a tad rapey, but when you're making, I think you just kind of have to accept that this is happening because we don't get into any, um, based on what I think, uh, uh, a sub- severe version of that. Like I didn't, this is some not great stuff in this movie, but, um, uh, I didn't feel too bad about any of those weird scenes. Um, uh, I enjoyed the movie. I think it's entertaining enough. Um, it is kind of surprising what Cronenberg pulled off. I mean, he had some experience coming into this, what he pulled off, but, uh, I had a good time tonight. I think the, uh, I mean, the effects, can you say good? I, I, I enjoyed looking at them. I enjoyed watching this movie. Um, it's an odd movie, but it's still entertaining. Uh, I will recommend Shivers. Holly, what do you think of Shivers? Um, I'm, I'm in agreement that there are elements of this that I can appreciate. Um, I think especially considering it was his early work, uh, some of the effects are pretty impressive. Uh, 1975, like I was impressed with with uh, some of these things. And I agree with you. I do like the doctor. He he is, there's something about his stoicism that is very entertaining. Um, but I was unbelievably bored throughout this whole movie. <laughs> I, did, I did not find it to be... Well, I agree that it's it's not a funny version of of this sort of creature type movie, um, and maybe that's more my style. I do like the horror comedy, so I, I like the I like the funny elements of creature feature kind of movies. Um, and this is not that. I don't even like. This doesn't even give me like a creature feature vibe. This is a very different kind no. of movie. It's a very different kind of movie. Um, and I think that's the kind I want from like a parasite slug situation. I think I need that comedy element because this content was just not for me. It is very rapey and I'm very not okay with that generally. Um, I get the, I get it's Cronenberg. That's what he goes for. He goes for making you uncomfortable. I, I'm not the biggest Cronenberg fan anyway. I do appreciate a lot of his stuff. You know, obviously I, I like some of his, his movies very much, um, but he's not my go-to guy. So maybe it's just not for me in general. Um, but yeah, I didn't really like anything about this movie. Do I? Yeah. From like start to finish, there was nothing that stood out to me that I would say, this is why you should check it out. 
So I'm gonna I'm gonna have to pass on on shivers for sure. Michaela, what did you think? You know, when you hear like the original titles for this movie and you read like the plot synopsis, it sounds very much like a 70s grindhouse drive in movie. And so like that's the kind of but I mean, I know that's not what Cronenberg does. So it's it's weird kind of taking one of those ideas and trying to put it through his filter. And I don't know for me if it works because I I'm not a Cronenberg expert by any means, but I've seen a lot of his movies and like I'm shocked that, you know, Dead Ringers, Scanners, um, you know, uh, Naked Lunch, like none of those have been brought to the freak show. That's crazy to me. You know, those are all worth watching. Those are all weird, but those are all keep you engaged. You know, this is definitely the slowest moving Cronenberg movie I've seen. And I mean, it is like an older, it's one of his earliest movies. So that makes sense, you know, for sure. But I just, I can't understand where this kind of like puritanical, like uptight view is coming from in this movie. Like, is this a personal belief of his? Is this just him? Like, is this satire? I don't know. And maybe I'm putting a 2021 lens on a movie from the seventies and that's not fair. Um, But I just like, this is not the kind of movie I would expect Cronenberg to make. And it's just, it didn't work for me. I just, I was kind of bored by it. And that usually doesn't happen when I watch Cronenberg stuff. So it didn't work for me. And I just, yeah, I'm not sure why this doesn't work. And I I think coming off of Slug so recently does not help this movie because we've yeah. seen the better version of this movie already, you know? Um, but I appreciate what he's trying to do. And I appreciate, like, I always appreciate his vision and, like, his craft because it is so unique to him that you can tell a Cronenberg movie from, like, one still usually, you know? And that, like, that takes discipline to do that. So I do like certain things like 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 that about this movie, but it's just not enough to take it over to the finish line for me. So I'm going to pass on Shivers. Colin, what did you think? Well, I think Cronenberg uh, is an interesting guy because he's one of like, I mean, I do think like, uh, <clears throat> you know, I don't know, uh, uh, David Lynch or something, you know, is a name that comes to mind. He's like one of like the true artists working within the horror genre where he has, there's, Things on that guy's mind, you know, in his subconscious that he's trying to come to grips with over, you know, like an entire filmography, you know, that you kind of watch him trying to work some of this stuff out, Um, you know, uh, concerns about sex, uh, death, uh, the body doing weird things, disease and transformation. And um, that's why it's like, you know, when you were saying that it comes off puritanical, I agree. You can read it that way. Obviously I think as a horror film you do, but the question I always ask myself is like the subversive guy behind the camera, like identifying with the, the power that eventually uh, you know, the social power that structure that, exists at the end of the movie he cast himself as one of those folks you know in the movie so it's like was this like a horror movie he knew was going to work on you know society you know to like bring you know you don't know right i mean i guess unless you you know we listen to like his um comments on it but it's again this is what i kind of like about about this type of artistic you know uh, this uh, type of horror movie where it, it does kind of uh i like that you can make all these reads into it you know the thing that i always like this is one of the the thing that always bothers me about um folks who complain when um this is a sidebar but the filmmakers don't like explain their movie like what did you mean you know, in this scene or that scene, or what does it mean when this, and then you have filmmakers like David Lynch who like refuse to tell you, or Stanley Kubrick would never tell you like what 2001 meant. And David Lynch would never explain stuff. And I was always like, why would you do that? Cause wouldn't we like to know like what actually, like what you were thinking as the artist, what were you trying to get across to us? But then Ridley Scott went and explained an element of Blade Runner. And to me, I disagree with what he, you know, like the way I interpret that movie is like, no, that's not, at all true you know you can think that but now you're ruining my movie by saying that so that's why i'm like no sometimes it's better if the filmmaker shuts the hell up and lets the audience actually see and take what you see out of the movie you know that's why christopher Christopher nolan better not ever explain the ending of uh in in, um inception (laughs) (laughs) plus unless he right yeah i mean plus he might do it in like 
but he's going to change in 20 years. So who knows? Like, right. If he were to explain the ending to it, like it's, it's going to change in his mind no matter what. Yeah. That's why I think, you know, but, film is this kind of, uh, that is your statement. I mean, that's basically him working something in his psyche out, you know, uh, over the, uh, over these films that he made. Um, I don't know. I really enjoyed this movie. I think I like it the more I see it, um, uh, more than I did maybe the first time I saw it, you know, I mean, obviously it's, it has a pace similar to the movies of the mid 1970s. Um, I think he, you know, the brood and uh, rabid and uh, scanners all some way, shape or form do kind of share that sensibility. Um, maybe even you could say video drone and, you know, but um, I still think that it's, it's an, it's important, I think, because of the subject and the themes that it's going after, I guess, you know, like that's why it was like, oh, you're actually, you know, trying to deal with some kind of, um, you know, uh, social upheaval through like sexual revolution or something. And, you know, it's like that's just weird to, for a horror filmmaker to 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 come to grips with. Or maybe it isn't. Yeah. Maybe like it's, in the horror genre is where you do it, where you're kind of primed to watch it where you wouldn't if it was like, um, you know, Masterpiece Theater presents a movie about the sexual revolution. And, <laughs> you know, and you'd be like sexual. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. On the eye of whatever this right yeah is. yeah yeah because yes. you could do the straight version of this sure. and it'd be like yeah whatever but yeah you put some little yeah, like parasite we, like monsters earlier, in there no put some parasites in there and yeah. <laughs> it's like okay give me a metaphor that's a monster and it yeah. crawls up old ladies walking canes and yeah and it burns you when it touches it uh so yeah i i don't know i would uh definitely i mean a is a Cronenberg, um, I think he is like one of the titans in the genre, the horror genre, especially the formation of the contemporary horror film. You know, all these guys that started working in the 70s and kind of created the landscape, which I still think is resonating today. Uh, I think you have to check it out just to see like where he's coming from. Uh, but I think it's also like, you know, of uh, of the 70s horror films, I think it's, you know, it's a classic. Uh, to me, you know, it's like, that's, that's one of those that I'd be like, if you're looking at 1970s horror, um, because it's, it's horror, it doesn't have that kind of level of the escape hatch of comedy. I know, you know, some of you were saying you saw comedic things in it now looking at it, but I think he intended it to be unsettling. Like there's, you know, this yeah. is just an unsettling movie. Um, uh, you know, it's going to be kind of uncomfortable to watch. And I kind of like that. Um, sometimes. like possession. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah. Not as not as challenging as that. <laughs> Sorry, Holly. That's an that's an aggressive full frontal assault. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It is. The movie that keeps coming up. I'm saying possession was a, a singular <laughs> like, <laughs> moment that no one here yeah. will ever forget. <laughs> Zalowski's <laughs> possession. Okay. Uh, yeah, I would recommend. Uh, sorry, ran long. Um, <laughs> Shivers. You should watch it. Uh, so we got. Uh, I think that was it. Was two for or two against. Yeah, 50-50 mm -hmm. okay. split. 50-50 split on Shivers. All right, next week, we're watching a movie that's chosen by... John, what are we watching next week? We are going to watch Wes Craven's New Nightmare. Oh, the new nightmare. All right. The new nightmare. I think we've mentioned it a lot on the show. It feels like we've done it before, but officially, it's coming. We're really uh, getting into uh, like all the Wes Craven stuff we can lately, huh? <laughs> I think so. I think we're just going to just go through it. I mean, we got to check somebody off the list, right? Yeah. Are we ever going to get to a point where we just do all the filmmakers resume? <laughs> all right. Well, we hope that you'll join us for Wes Craven's new nightmare. That's next week on the Saturday Night Freak Show. And until then, ladies and germs, the basement is going dark. <laughs>